Hi, I'm Chris Anderson from Science Over Everything. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory and co-host of PBS's Stargazers. On August 21st, 2017, one of the most spectacular astronomical events can be viewed from the United States for the first time in over 50 years, a total solar eclipse. Yes, this is exciting and we want to tell you all about it, how eclipses work, and how to look at it safely. Too complex, much too complex, too complex, much too complex. A solar eclipse is when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun, blocking out the Sun's light. But how does this work? Let's say this light bulb is the Sun, and this styrofoam ball is the moon. My head is going to represent our view from Earth. Now, the moon is circling the Earth, and it takes about one month to make one complete orbit. We call that a revolution. The moon is also spinning like a top, or rotating. It takes about one month for the moon to make one complete rotation. When the time it takes for a body to make one rotation is equal for it to go in one orbit or revolution, scientists call that tidal lock. This is why we can only see one side of the moon from the Earth. This also means the amount of the moon that we can see from Earth varies as it goes around its orbit. When the moon is directly behind the Earth, the sun lights up the space of the moon that we can see. We call this a full moon. As the moon revolves clockwise around the Earth, we see less and less of the side that's lit up by the sun. Scientists call this waning. When the moon, the Earth, and the sun all form a right angle, we call that a quarter moon. Eventually, the moon will rotate so that it's in between the sun and the Earth. At that point, the side that is lit up by the sun will not be able to be seen from Earth, so we won't be able to see the moon at all. We call that a new moon. As the moon continues to orbit the Earth, more and more of the side that is lit up by the sun can be seen with each passing night. Scientists call this waxing. First, we'll see another quarter moon. Then, we'll see another full moon. The whole orbit takes about one month. Now, every once in a while, during a new moon, the moon's shadow will cross over the face of the Earth. If you're in that shadow, the moon will block out the sun. That's how an eclipse happens. So, a solar eclipse happens when the moon's shadow falls on the Earth. And to have this all happen, everything's got to line up just right. You've got to have the moon, sun, and Earth all in this perfect line, with the sun on one side, the Earth on the other, and the moon right in the middle. Now, to have a total solar eclipse, that is like super extremely rare. You could go decades or even centuries for any one place on Earth to have this happen. So, as the moon is going around the Earth, well, it goes around the Earth about once every month. So, why don't we have eclipses every month? When we're at new moon, shouldn't there be an eclipse? Well, not exactly. The moon's orbit is tilted by about five degrees, so everything doesn't line up every month. And everything has to be just right for this to work out. So, to get it precisely, oh man, that is what is so cool about this event. Now, let's say this basketball here is the Earth. And this baseball over here will represent the moon. This is about the right size of Earth to moon ratio. Now what we got to do is we have to put the moon at the right distance from the Earth. And for this, that's 7.3 meters or about 24 feet. Okay, so since the moon's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth, well, the shadow doesn't always line up and hit the Earth. When the moon is too high, the shadow will go above the Earth. When the moon is too low in its orbit, it'll go below the Earth. But when you get it in just the right spot where the shadow of the moon reaches the Earth, that's in the position called the nodes. And when that happens, it is an awesome eclipse, ready to go. So the moon orbits pretty far from the Earth, and its shadow doesn't cover the entire Earth. So that means an eclipse is a very localized event. Only some people get to see each eclipse. Now, what you most often see is called a partial eclipse. That's when only part of the sun is blocked by part of the moon. And this happens every couple years or so. But to see totality, to see a total eclipse, having the moon block the entire sun, that is super rare. What happens is the darker part of the shadow of the moon reaches the Earth, a very localized event. And it's called totality when all of the sun is blocked out. The shadow that reaches the Earth is called the umbra. This is the darkest part of the shadow of the moon. And think of it like an umbrella that uh, shelters you from the rain. The umbra is the darkest part of the shadow that shelters you from the sun. 
Now when this happens, totality is awesome. The whole sun is blocked out, but the only thing is it happens for just a few minutes and the sun comes right back out. So it's gotta be in the right place at the right time. So for August 21st, most of the people in the United States will only see a partial solar eclipse. And that means that not the darkest part of the shadow, the umbra hits you, you're gonna get a lighter shadow called the penumbra. And so anybody that's under the penumbra, this is the entire United States, you'll get to see at least a partial solar eclipse. Reviewing a total solar eclipse is extremely cool, but it can also be dangerous. But absolutely, positively, do not just stare up at the sun with the naked eye. That is dangerous. He's right. Looking directly at the sun without any protection is dangerous, and you can cause permanent damage to your eyes. If you're going to observe either an uneclipsed or partially eclipsed sun, you need special solar lenses, kind of like these eclipse glasses here. Regular sunglasses, even very dark ones, are not safe. If you need to purchase a pair of these glasses, click on the link below. Or you can make this very stylish thing. This is like a pinhole projector, and what it'll do is let you get an image of the sun. You take a box like this, put a, a piece of foil over it, and put a really tiny pinhole. Then let the sunlight come through the hole into the box onto the other side where there's a white piece of paper. This will make a tiny image of the sun, but it'll let you see some great details, like maybe if there's a big sunspot, or especially a great image during the eclipse. If you're in an area where you're gonna be able to see the total solar eclipse, there will be a minute or so where you'll be able to look directly at it. This will occur during totality, when the moon will completely block out the sun. This is really special because you'll be able to see the corona, which is the outer atmosphere of the sun. It's much hotter than the surface and it goes out for millions of kilometers. But once totality is over, make sure you go back to viewing the solar eclipse safely. So definitely do not miss this one on August 21st, but in case you do, or maybe it's cloudy where you are, get ready for the next one. That'll be on April 8th, 2024. I want to give a big thanks to Dean Regis and the Cincinnati Observatory for helping us put this video together. Make sure you check out Dean's podcast, Looking Up, and his TV show on PBS, Stargazers. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure you check out scienceovereverything.com for any events in science that you need to learn about. Too complex. Much too complex.